Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have my January wrap-up for you. I did do a mid-month wrap-up as well this month, so I will have that linked in the description if you haven't watched that already. And so let's just get into the books I read this month. The first book I read this month was Savage Lover by Sophie Lark. This is the third book in the Brutal Birthright series, and they're all standalone, so you can read them on their own. This one I unfortunately didn't love. I gave this one three stars. It follows Camille and Nero, but my big issue with this one was that there was almost no romance in this book. I actually repeatedly, while I was reading it, went back to the Amazon like description page to check that it said that this was a romance book, because I was like, maybe Sophie Lark just decided to write like a, a general mafia book in between the romances. But it is labeled romance, but there was no real romance in this book until like the very end. I felt like a lot of this book, the two main characters are not even together, like physically in the same place. It is very much like, it's dual perspective, but normally when it's dual perspective, you're sort of like, okay, they're both standing in the kitchen and now you're looking at it from the girl's point of view and then now you're looking at it from the guy's point of view sort of the same event, I guess, but like carried forward. Whereas this was like when you were in Camille's point of view, you were in one place and when you were in Nero's point of view, you were somewhere completely different. Like it was two different storylines almost. And they do sort of merge at the end, but it was very much like, I felt like they weren't spending enough time together in this one to really, for me, feel for the romance, I guess. It was just a lot of her dealing with a lot of things, her She's running a like mechanic shop kind of on her own at this point and he is you know doing all his family mafia stuff and is planning this big thing that he wants to do. They're just kind of both living their own like really separate lives and not really interacting much. Like I think the first 200 pages it's just them like occasionally bumping into each other places and they're not even like really talking they're just like making like small talk like hey how are you like good okay bye and that's like the whole first 200 pages those are the only interactions they have and then in the span of like five pages or something all of a sudden he's like no I'm in love with you and I'm like what on earth just happened like it was so weird I like I said I didn't love this one I gave it three stars because I do think it was good as a book but as a romance it was not so great I will continue on with this series because I do think that the next two might be my favorites of the series. I've heard a lot of good things about them, so I'm excited to get to those two. So like I said, I will continue on with those even though this one was not my favorite. Next I read The Year We Hit Away by Serena Bowen. This is number two in the Ivy Years series, which I'm trying to read all of these. And these are hockey romances, but they're sort of interesting because at least in the first two They've both been more about ex-hockey players than like current hockey players and in both of them the female has also been a hockey player so I thought that was kind of interesting as well that like usually it's like the guy that's the hockey player in the relationship but in this one both the guy and the girl were playing hockey and in the first one it was the same they were both hockey players and so I kind of thought that was cool and this one follows a guy who doesn't have the best home life and he ends up kind of like sneaking in his seven-year-old sister into his dorm room so she can stay with him and he's kind of hiding her from like everyone on the campus so they don't know that she's there and he's kind of become responsible for taking her to school and he's working all these jobs and he's had to quit hockey to be able to do all this for her and he meets this girl in class who has moved to the school kind of to get away from like a lot of this stuff that's going on in her life she's changed her name she's like ready to sort of have a fresh start and she meets this guy and they're both kind of got these secrets he's got his sister and she's got her whole like other life sort of going on and so they're both kind of secretive and not really like willing to get close to each other because they don't want those secrets to come out and obviously they do grow closer it is obviously a college romance hockey players like i said not a ton of hockey playing because he has quit the team she's not playing hockey anymore but they are both ex-hockey players and there is sort of like a hockey atmosphere I guess like they do go to hockey games and the other hockey players are around because he is friends with them all so there is sort of the hockey vibes in this one I gave this one four stars I'm pretty sure it was pretty good I liked the the whole hockey 
college atmosphere. I'm always down for that. Next I read A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert. This is number three, I believe, in the Wicked Villain series. I've been trying to sort of make some progress on a lot of the series that I've started and just never continued with. And so that's why a lot of these are like number three or two or whatever in a series is that's what I'm trying to do right now. And this one I didn't love. I think I gave this one two and a half stars. I realized after reading this one that I think the basic plot in all three of these books so far has been exactly the same. It's like this girl who is kind of trying to get away from someone else and she ends up kind of with the villain of the story even though the villains in these books are more like the good guys I guess and usually they end up making some kind of deal with this person to save themselves from someone else and that's like the story in all of these books is someone running away from someone else into the arms of the supposed villain and like aside from that I just found I was never really super invested in their relationship there was this huge build up in this book towards a sort of like fight or like confrontation that was going to happen that I thought was going to be like completely insane when we finally got to it because it literally the whole book is a build up to this confrontation and when it finally happens I was just so underwhelmed and that was disappointing. I think the plot in these books is just not on par really with like what I would normally expect from a book and I know that's probably not why people are reading these books so I guess it doesn't really matter but like for me I want some plot and the plots in these just aren't great to me. I did like the second book but I didn't I haven't loved the first one or this one so I'm not sure how I feel about continuing on with this series in particular. I may finish it off just because there's only two more books I think and they're short so I may do that but I haven't really been vibing with them which is kind of disappointing. Next I read Under Lock by Mariana Zapata and this one I gave four and a half stars to. I did really like it. It follows a it's sort of a brother's best friend kind of book. This girl needs a job and her brother gets her a job as the receptionist for this tattoo parlor that his friend works at and his friend is known for kind of being a jerk to everyone and he's a jerk to her when she first shows up and obviously it's Mariana Zapata so it's like super slow burn. This one was a little bit less slow burn than some of her other like more recent books I would say but it still definitely had like a lot of sort of distance for you to go before they got together. I did notice in this book that, and I think this is because someone has pointed it out, I've seen a couple times now people complaining about some of Mariana Zapata's older books having issues in them to deal with like just like comments about women or different um, groups of people. I've seen like tons of people complaining about that in some of her older books. I haven't read a lot of her older books so I can't comment on that but in this one I definitely noticed there were some times where the guy talked to her in a way where I was kind of like I don't know that I like that you know like why are we sort of encouraging that I guess and I wasn't a huge fan of those moments in those books when I started picking up on them I'm not sure if I'm only picking up on them now because I'm like aware that her older books have some issues but there were just I don't know like I said some things he said to her that I was like trying to imagine a guy saying something like that to me in real life and I was like it just didn't sit right and so I don't know maybe that was just me like I said I gave it four and a half stars because I did really like the story and I'm a sucker for a tattoo artist and I love Marianne Spott's books but that was like where I lost the half star was I was just kind of like not a fan of some of the comments he made but other than that it was a pretty good book. The next three books I read all are part of a series and I actually filmed a reading vlog for it so I'm not going to go too in depth of these but I read Stay With Me, When I'm Gone, and Now Open Your Eyes by Nicole Fiorina and like I said vlogged it so I'm not going to go super in depth. This series was not what I was expecting though. It, I feel like because I've seen so many people that are like heavy romance readers reading this I was expecting it to be like a three book sort of trilogy following one couple in all of their like relationship ness I guess and that's just not really what these books are the first book is definitely like I would say a solid romance but the second two focus a lot more on like all kinds of other like side plots where the romance sort of takes a back seat to that which I was okay with because I did like the other plots but I just think that's not what I was expecting going in because like I said I'd seen so many romance readers read this that I was expecting it to be just one like really heavy romance series and it wasn't it follows a girl who 
ends up at this school. It's sort of like a college for kids who are on the verge of being worse places, I guess. So some of them, like, could end up in prison. Some of them could end up in, like, a mental hospital or, like, different things. Like, they're, they all kind of have, like, different issues that they're basically at this school. And if they can make it through the school, then they're, like, free to go. But if they, like, cause problems at the school, then they will probably end up in prison or in a mental hospital or, like, whatever. And so this girl is there because she has been acting out for years and she drives her stepmother's mom through a ca mom's car through a door like the garage door and like different things like she's just constantly doing all these stupid things and so her dad like sends her to this school and is just kind of hoping that that like solves the problem but she doesn't feel any emotions when she gets there but everyone's convinced that she hasn't always been that way that there's something that happened to her that she can't remember or is like choosing to block out that has like caused her to be that way and so they're kind of in the first book working to figure out what that was that has sort of made her the way she is and at the school she meets Ollie who is there for his own reasons and they become friends very quickly and things just go from there like I said I will have a lot more information of this in the reading vlog because it may be a long one. I haven't gone through the footage for that yet, but I think it's probably going to be pretty long. Next, I read Dirty by Kylie Scott. This was just a random book that I picked up. It was an audiobook, actually, that I picked up to listen to while I was working, and I just wanted a short little one, and this one was only like eight hours. And so I picked this one up. It's the first in, I believe it's called a Dive Bar series. And this one I didn't love. I gave this one three stars. It follows a woman who runs out on her wedding day because she finds out her groom has been sleeping with the best man and she runs away from this wedding and when she's like trying to escape and get away from like the crowd of the wedding and everything she ends up jumping a fence into this guy's backyard and she's kind of thinking like oh maybe the house is empty like whatever I'll just climb through the window because like people are coming to look for her and so she climbs in and is like sitting in his shower just like crying when he comes home and is like what on earth are you doing in my house and obviously they start talking and getting to know each other the thing I didn't love about this book was it was very very insta love the whole book only spans two weeks and by the end of it they were already like talking about like marriage and I was like okay like this girl literally just ran out on another wedding she's like barely even been in this relationship for five minutes and I thought that was just a little odd, wasn't a huge fan of that. Insta Love just like really one of my big pet peeves in books. And this one obviously had that, so wasn't a huge fan. Other than that, it was okay. Next, I read Enemies by Tijin, and this book has been on my like radar for so long. Like probably since I first started reading in 2020, I've had my eye on this book, and I finally read it. And I gave this one four and a half stars, I'm pretty sure. It was close to a five star for me but just not quite there. I really loved the whole storyline. It follows a girl who ends up in this college town with this big football player that she grew up being best friends with but they don't talk anymore because she sort of feels like his family has been out to get her. Like her mom gets diagnosed with cancer and right after this guy's dad fires her dad and she just kind of always felt like they had it out for her and so she kind of hates him doesn't want anything to do with him and so she's going to college in this town and just figures like I'll never run into him like he's a big NFL player he won't ever be around or whatever and he kind of starts like showing up because her stepmom is like harassing them to like hang out again and he's sort of around and the one thing with this book was I was very confused for the first like 90 ish pages because I didn't realize he was an NFL player and not a college football player because I don't know that they ever actually said that in the book. It does say it on the back so maybe you were supposed to read the back and just make that assumption but I hadn't read the back so I didn't know that and I was kind of confused why there was like all these college football games going on and this guy was never at any of them but once I figured that out it was a little bit better. I definitely thought there were some really cute moments in this one. It's like obviously an enemies to lovers story and there was like one scene in particular in this book that I really really loved and I wish there had been more like it. If you've read the book it's the scene where he, she meets two of his teammates. I just really liked that scene. I thought it was really cute and really really loved that one. I thought it was odd 
in this book. I don't know if this is just me, like, picking up on weird things, but I felt like it was hinted at very strongly in this book that this girl had an eating disorder, and it was never addressed in the book. And so I'm not sure why those little, like, I don't know, like, little clues or, like, whatever were dropped that that was something that was going on when it was never, like, discussed. Like, it never came up in the end or anything, and I thought that was sort of strange because she talks about multiple times, like, losing, like, large chunks of weight, and he's always trying to get her to eat, and she makes some comment about not having her period for a year, and I just thought, like, why, why are all these, like, little things in the book if they're not going to address it like I just thought that was so weird to me and I don't know I thought that was strange like I said I haven't seen anyone else comment on that but it was something that I felt like in the back of my mind because I was like picking up on all these clues I kept thinking like oh something's gonna come up that is like related to that and that's why they keep saying it but they never like discussed it at all and I was just like okay that's weird but whatever the rest of the book was really good I just thought that was like a super strange thing to sort of hint at and then do nothing with and so like I said did like the book thought that little bit was strange but I did like it lastly I read Running Wild by Kay Tucker this is obviously the most recent book in the Simple Wild series I gave this one four stars I did a whole reading vlog on this one as well it's already up I will link it down below if you want to watch it and I did like this one I was a little disappointed in the romance but I love being back in Alaska so that was sort of my final thoughts on that one and so those are all the books I read this month thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below I do new book videos every single week and I'll see you next time